Come on in. Welcome, everyone. It is time. It is time to start. This is Hope Before Halloween, which is an awesome thing, right? I mean, hope, right? I, I have to tell you, let's uh, clear the screen here for just a minute. Um, we need this, okay? Our world needs this. I was sharing with a couple of our attendees before we actually uh, launched. Oh, I didn't start recording. Here we go. Okay, now we're ready. I get so excited. Um, I, I shared with a few of our attendees before I started the recording that I've been traveling. And yesterday, I was flying home from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, Vicki and I had covered 11 states in eight days. And four of those were in between while we came home, did the laundry, uh, did some work, and then we headed out for the other half of the trip. We got to see all six of our grandkids. It was so awesome. But we're flying home yesterday from Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, I, I was sitting there waiting to board my flight when I noticed a news story up on the monitor. I looked up and I saw children running from a school in St. Louis, another school shooting. And I, I, it just sickens my heart, especially after I've been hugging on my grandkids, right? To see that there is such trouble in our world. Now, I don't know all of the story of that young person who chose to do that horrendous act or other shootings. We hear about it in the news all the time, right? But I do know as a professional psychologist that the number one risk factor for risky behavior, including suicide, including violent behavior, including addiction, is hopelessness. Hopelessness. And the number one curative factor or preventative factor is hope. Here's the thing. You can create hope on demand. And I will show you exactly how to do that in this webinar here today. Why are you here? Why did you sign up? Some of you were so gracious to respond to my email invitation with some of the reasons why you are here. And I'm hearing some common themes. There are three of them that I have noticed in your responses to me. You want to be more positive, okay? Regardless of what's going on around you, like the news stories that we hear that can be so disturbing. You want to help your loved ones. Very sensitive to, sensitive to this one. Because I see my grandkids now growing up in a world where I want them to have the tools and the empowerment to take charge of their own life. And you're ready for a change in the world, kind of like I am. Those are the three main themes that I've seen in the emails that you've sent in to me. Thank you for being here. Look, fear, negativity, pessimism are, I think, more dangerous than any of the circumstances of our world. And as we, as we come together now, it, it's about a week before Halloween. Now, some of you are joining from country, countries where this may not be a thing. But here in the United States, Halloween is kind of a big deal for a lot of kids, families. Um, kind of a fun little holiday. But it, there's also a lot of really scary things in our world. Fear and negativity and pessimism are taking lives unnecessarily. And, and I know I'm stating that very strongly, but as a professional psychologist, I just want you to know, I have been doing this for three decades now. Uh, I'm a professional psychologist. The first half of my career was spent in traditional psychotherapy, where I was working primarily with children, adolescents, families, parents, and then I made a big shift in my career over to positive psychology. I'll share with you what exactly that means here as we get into the model today. But my reason for being here is both personal and professional. And I have some promises that I want to make to you. Okay, You can jot these down if you want to. By the end of today's webinar, and we'll spend about an hour here together. If you've got the time, 
Stick around and here's what you will receive. You'll get a knowledge that is absolutely critical to the proper operation of your own mind. I think of this as the operating instructions for the equipment, okay? It's not about what's going on around us. It's about what's going on in here. You don't have to change a thing. You have to change a think. Now that's simple to say, I'm going to dive into that at a level that will absolutely empower you to have a better control over your own mind. Reclaim your mind. It's going to be really clear to you when I point it out. You will experience immediate relief from the stuckness. If you will track what we're talking about here today, you will feel something. And it's because your feelings are so tied to what's going on cognitively. I'll show you how that works. Now, I'm asking you for something too, because I, I've done this enough to know that by the end of our conversation today and during our conversation today, you will feel some things, you will realize some things, you will have thoughts like, oh, you know, I should probably, I want you to pay attention to that. So the way to engage in this webinar today, I want you to take some notes, okay? Now, you don't have to take notes on what I'm saying. I'm recording this. I'll share the recording with you later on. You don't have to take notes on what I'm saying. I want you to take notes on what you feel and what you think and what you realize as we have this conversation today. That's the most important part. And if you're tuned in, your brain will latch on to whatever it is you need and will give you an idea about what you get to do next. Pay attention to that. Okay. In exchange for my spending my time with you today, I would just ask that you take action on what your brain tells you that you get to do. And it will. If my experience holds true, it will tell you. Your brain will tell you some things that you need to do. Note your realizations, your connections, your thoughts, your feelings. That's what I want you to take notes on. Okay. Now, commit right now, up front that you will take a step, some action toward whatever your mind tells you that you get to do next. If you will do that, look, you don't have to worry about everything, okay? Sometimes learning about positive psychology can be kind of like holding a little Dixie cup under a waterfall, and it can be a little overwhelming. Don't worry about that. Just catch something in your Dixie cup. That's all you got to worry about, okay? Whatever's next for you is next for you. Is that a deal? So I will share the model with you. We're going to launch into that next. And in exchange, you're going to be paying attention to what's next for you and you commit to take some action on that. Okay. If, if you're not willing to commit to take some action, I'm not saying you have to do anything I invite you to do. I want you to do whatever your brain tells you is next for you. Okay. In a positive direction, because that's going to move the needle. That's going to take you to the next level of what's for you, okay? And I'll support you in that however I can. You take your next steps and whatever your next steps are. Okay, now there's a couple of ways that you can participate while we're here together. There is a chat. Some of you have already checked in and thank you guys for checking in uh, with where you're listening from, um, I'm not going to be monitoring the chat much because I've, I've got some things that I want to really share with you. There is also a Q&A right here down on your control panel. Now, we are live streaming this to our YouTube family as well. And thank you for joining us on YouTube. If, uh, if you're watching us there, you won't have the opportunity to interact with us the way that you would if you had actually registered and you were here in the webinar. Um, but for those of you who are here in person, there's a Q&A in your control panel right down there usually, or it might be on the side, depending on where what your uh, browser configuration is. There's also uh, an opportunity for you to raise your hand. Now, don't do it right now. I'm going to save some time at the end to answer your questions. So if you jot down some questions while we're talking that you really want to address with me, that's another way that you can participate to your life. And those of you who are on YouTube, please use the comment section to engage in that way. And uh, hopefully we'll have somebody on our staff who can go in and 
interact with you. If not, we'll get to your comments as we move forward uh, as well. Okay, so let's jump in. One of the important things to realize or to tune into, see, my job is to illuminate the obvious, okay? This is so cool. I get paid to tell people things they already know or uh, to show them things that they already see. But there's a lot of things that are obvious but unnoticed, okay? I get to call those to your attention. You'll see them immediately as soon as I call them to your attention. Like the fact that we're speaking English. Anybody notice? Pretty obvious, isn't it? And you didn't even think about it until I called it to your attention. There are a lot of obvious but unnoticed processes going on in our mind all the time. Let's get into what a few of those are. Okay, the first one that I want to call to your attention is, is a process called metacognition. Now, metacognition is really cool. Okay, cognition is thinking. All right, metacognition is a higher level, it's thinking about thinking. And this creates a little space, and that space is where our choice exists. This is so important because until we see it as a choice, it's not. So I'm inviting you to go to a level of metacognition today as I share with you some powerful truths about how your own mind is operating. Now, let's create a model together. It is what it is. All right, now that can be a little annoying depending on who's saying it and why. You've probably heard that before. It is what it is. All it means for today is the way things are. It, it's your what it is, okay? It's who you are, where you are, who you're with, what you have, the way things are without changing anything. It is what it is. And I want you to see what your brain is doing with your what it is. So just think about where you are right now. What's going on for you? What, where are your finances? Where's your health? How's your family doing? What's your bank account looking like? How are you doing with your business? Your relationships? Whatever it is, okay? And we're just going to establish that it is what it is. Now, I think his story will help to bring this home. Some of you have heard this. You know, a lot of people who, who jumped on today, and for whatever reasons you're here, we have some people who come to every webinar. And thank you for being here. I love you guys. You're going to get some review if you've heard me go over this before. Some of you are just connecting with this. Maybe you found me through an interview that I did on a podcast or one of my YouTube colleagues or... Um, you just are now being introduced to, wait a minute, there's this positivity psychologist? Yeah, if, if this is your first time hearing it, this is going to change the game for you, okay? Now, let me share a little story that illustrates this. A couple of years ago, I was speaking at the Youth Leadership Conference for the National Speakers Association in Orlando. And uh, during my time there, I had an opportunity to hear this lady. This is Jeannie Robertson, just a delightful person. And she passed away uh, not too long ago. Uh, so we've lost this brilliant talent, uh, except that she captured it all for us on her YouTube channel. Go check out Jeannie when you have a chance. Six foot two, thick Southern accent, and just the funniest family friendly G rated comedian on the planet. I love this lady. And I was sitting on the front row listening to one of my heroes as I was waiting for my chance to present. Well, while Jeannie is speaking, I get a text message. Now, uh, I've, I've spoken to audiences where they actually know Jeannie Robertson. And you if you've ever seen her in action live on the stage, if someone is going through their phone, she calls them out from the stage. She has a conversation with them. So I'm not going to get my phone out and look at the text that I just received. But I got a little notification on my watch. You know how those come up? And if you've got a little smartwatch or a Fitbit or something, 
um, I, I got the notification. So I glanced down to see what the notification was. And as I looked down on my wrist, I saw this. I don't know if you can read this from your screen, but it's from my sister, Melanie. And she said, I wanted you to know that Talon had an accident last night. He was on his annual volunteer first responder temp weekend and slipped and fell off a 30 foot dot, dot, dot. Now, Timp is a mountain near my home. Talon is married to my niece. And I'm getting this message. Now, what does dot, dot, dot mean? It means there's more, but you don't get it here. You have to go to your phone. Well, I wasn't going to go to my phone. I didn't want to have that conversation with Jeannie. But now I am worried. Okay. Dot, dot, dot. What? What happened? What? He fell? And if you can imagine how that feels, and I know you can imagine how it feels because stuff happens to you all the time. Just like it happens to me all the time. And here I am getting this text. Okay. One that you never want to get. My thoughts went immediately to this cute little family. This is Talon. My niece, Katrina, their little baby Sage, taken about two weeks before the accident. And that's all I can think of. My own dad lost his father to an accident when he was five. I had a good friend of mine who crashed his plane in Utah, like just a couple of miles from my office, leaving his wife and family without a husband and father. And now I'm getting this message about my nephew. Okay, so just notice how that feels. Um, I think you can you can join me there, right? You're familiar. Okay. Jeannie finished up. I slipped out of the room because I've got a phone call to make. I have to see what's going on. And as I opened up my phone and read the rest of the message, let me pick you up where we left off here. Slipped and fell off a 30-foot waterfall and broke both his ankles and seriously injured his knee. They could use your prayers. <sighs> How did you feel when I shared the rest of the message with you? Like me, did you feel some relief? Some profound relief? I did. I called my niece immediately. I'm, I'm like, Katrina, I just heard what happened. She said, thank you for calling Uncle Paul. We're just feeling so grateful. Grateful? Relieved? What, what's wrong with us? <laughs> now, you're not wrong for feeling that. I want you to see why you felt it. Now, some people at this point, they say, well, that's, that's still, I mean, I feel really bad for this guy. He felt, yeah, 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 yeah. It is what it is, okay? And what it is, is two compound fractures, both ankles. Then why did we feel some relief? Because most of us did, right? Let me show you why. This is so important. It is what it is, okay? We've already established that. And what it is in this case is two broken ankles. That's it. Now, think about whatever your what it is is. Are you in a bankruptcy? Are you in a divorce? Did you just get a diagnosis? Was there an accident? What, what's your what it is? Bring that to your mind. It is what it is. And in, in the story I shared with you, it's two broken ankles. Now, what is our mind doing? Do you see the word that I put up there in the model? Right down there in the bottom, evaluation. Meaning judgment. And your brain has to do this. This is how we're built psychologically. Okay, you can't turn it off any more than you can turn off gravity. You ever get up in the morning and think, oh, I wonder if gravity's on. No, you never wonder because it always is. And so is this, always on. You can't stop judging. I just want you to notice it, okay? So notice that you're constantly judging yourself, aren't you? Yes, you are. Kind of harshly sometimes, I might add. 
You judge your spouse, you judge your kids, you judge your family, you judge your coworkers, you judge your community, you judge the weather, you judge the government, you judge everything in your life. You're judging me. It's cool, I'm judging you. Just notice it, okay? You judge your judging, Charlene, love that. I just saw that pop up in the chat. Yes, you're doing it all the time. No, I'm not telling you not to judge. In fact, I, I read the Bible. There's a verse in the Bible that says, judge not. And I'm like, oh, crap, I suck at that. <laughs> because I'm constantly judging. And so are you, okay? So I'm not telling you to not to. I'm saying notice that you do. Now, the word evaluation implies comparison with some standard. Um, Vicki is an educator. She works in the schools as a speech language pathologist. And any teacher will tell you evaluation implies comparison with some standard. All right. So that here's the standard. Now, how do I measure up to that? You compare, you judge, right? This is true in our, in our own mind. So to judge something, you have to have something to compare it to. And if you don't have something, you make something up and you got a really great imagination. I ask my audiences sometimes, and I'm standing right in front of them, right? And I say, am I a tall man? And they're like, uh, yeah, I guess. Would it help if I showed you a picture of me? Check this out. I'm the one on the right. <laughs> so I don't look very tall, right? I am six foot two, which is also a standard. You compare me to that. And your brain has a way of evaluating or judging how tall I am. My friend Mark, who also passed away a couple of years ago, uh, seven foot four. Mark used to play center for the Utah Jazz. Just an amazing giant of a man in so many ways. Miss Mark. But am I a tall man or not? Huh. It depends on who or what you compare me to. You see that? So when you compare me to yourself, I don't know how tall you are, but if you compare me at six foot two to you, do I seem tall? I don't know. To most people, I'd seem kind of tall. But when you compare me to Mark Eaton, who's seven foot four, I look like a shrimp. So notice when I say, am I a tall man? That's an evaluation question. Your answer to that depends on who or what you compare me to. And you've got to have a standard of comparison. If you don't have one, you'll make one up and you've got a really good imagination. So let's go back to the model and see how that plays out. Like in this situation that I told you about with my nephew. Okay. It is what it is. And what it is, is two compound fractures, both ankles. Oh, and a messed up knee. I always forget that part, but you, you got it, right? Two broken ankles. It is what it is. Now, can you imagine anything better than that? Well, yes, you can. Like, like no broken ankles, right? No accident occurs. Everything goes just like I planned it to. That's how my life rolls. Not. That's la la land, but you can imagine it. That's my point. Now, when we take what it is, two broken ankles, and we compare it in evaluation mode to something better, like no broken ankles, then how do you feel about two broken ankles? This stinks. This sucks. This bites. This is bad. Now, you're never wrong about how you feel. In fact, let me say that in a different way. You're always right about how you feel. How you feel, represented by the red arrow here, that negative red arrow, okay? How you feel is 100% consistent with the way your own mind is doing this process. I just want you to notice it. Now, and you're probably getting ahead of me, right? Can you imagine anything worse than two broken ankles? 
Yeah. Yeah, I think you can. And I helped you with this, didn't I? Because I shared with you about my dad who lost his father to an accident, my friend who crashed his plane. You can imagine something worse, and I did, okay? That's why I told you the story, so that you can just see it. Now, when you take two broken ankles, two broken ankles, which is what it is, and you compare it in evaluation mode to something far worse, like the death of that young father on Mount Timpanogos, then how do you feel about two broken ankles? Woohoo! Can I get a woohoo from you guys? Thank you to those of you who audibly said it. Isn't that awesome? Jonathan wrote it in the chat. Yeah. Charlie, you guys are on. Woohoo! And you're never wrong about how you feel. In fact, you are always right about how you feel. How you feel is 100% consistent with the way your own mind is doing this process. I want you to notice something. It is what it is. Okay? And let's establish something before I go on, because I want to get the rest of the model to you, and then I'm going to save time to, to answer some of your questions and do some coaching. What it is, is all you got. Now, I, I am not saying it's all you could have or all you will have. We're getting to that. They do. But what I'm saying is it's all you've got right now by definition. It is what it is. Now, if you don't believe me on that, don't just take my word for it. I want you to run it through your own filters and see if it's true. Okay. Uh, ask yourself, is what I've got right now better than what I've got right now? No, that's silly. It's exactly what you've got right now. That's what I'm talking about, okay? So what it is is all you've got. And what it is is always. Now, my editor tells me to always avoid the word always and never use the word never. What it is is always between better and worse. Is that true? Because if that's true, then no matter how bad things seem right now, in your what it is, it could always be worse. Right? Are you having a hard time with that? I, I, I remember how I felt when I saw the news stories. I, I told you about the one that I heard this morning, a school shooting in, in St. Louis. How could it be worse than that? Last report, three people had died in that shooting. How could it be worse than that? Four people, five people. Okay, we hear all of the stories all the time. Now, I'm not trying to be morbid or morose about this. I want you to see it. September 11th, 2001. How could it be worse than that? Thousands of people died. Terrorists crashing planes into buildings. How could it be worse? One more casualty. One more plane. It could always be worse. Now, am I sick and wrong for having this imagination? No, because you can do it too. I don't care how bad it is. It could always be worse. Is that true? Okay, check it out. Now, is that true the other direction? Because no matter how good things seem, it could always be better. Is that true? And if you're not sure about this, just check your bank account. <laughs> yeah, it comes true real quick, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Disclaimer. I am not here to tell you how to think. I don't have that kind of authority. I want you to see that you are thinking. And your thinking makes a difference. Remember, you are always right about how you feel. How you feel is 100% consistent with the way your mind is doing this process, and you can't turn it off. 
So just notice that whatever your what it is, is, you're constantly judging it. So here's a trick question for you. How you doing? Now, do not say fine. In psychology, that's the F-bomb. Okay. Do not say fine. No. You can say it if you want to. But most people, when I say, how are you doing? They're like, fine. It's not even an answer. And how are you doing isn't even a question. It's a greeting. Okay. But we're getting past that today. I'm a psychologist. How are you doing? How are you doing in your relationships? How are you doing in your health, your finances, your business, whatever? Okay. And notice that you have an answer. Notice that you've got an answer. I don't care what it is. I mean, I do, because I want you to be happy and joyful, but that's up to you. Notice that you have an answer. All right? Just notice it. And where's it coming from? It's not coming from what it is. It's coming from your judgment of what it is. Do you see it? Awesome. Eric just said, Dr. Paul sounds like Joey on Friends. Is that a compliment? I don't know. I, I do want you to see what's going on in your head. Okay. All right. Now let's get to the next part here. Um, I promised myself, and maybe I promised you at the beginning, that I'm going to give you some uh, powerful ways to apply this. Now hang tight because we've got one more process that I need to share with you. But before we go there, I'm giving you a brain hack that you can apply right now. Remember, this is hope before Halloween. You don't even have to wait till Halloween. Some of you are already feeling hope right now because of what I just shared with you about your own brain. Awesome. I love that. But here's the hack, okay? I call it the gratitude power-up. Here, let's pull this up on the screen so you'll get a little visual. All right, the gratitude power up is this. Now, and it, just as a little context, the psychological the psychological literature is really consistent around this issue. Gratitude is one of the most powerful ways to upgrade your experience in life and to experience relief and peace now. Okay? And it's because gratitude is the fastest way to get to a positive evaluation of your what it is. So gratitude lists have been given forever. In fact, when I was in my old clinical practice, I used to use those as well. But now that I understand the power of it, this is a starting point, okay? And this is emotional first aid. I've literally seen this save lives. Listen to what I'm saying, okay? I have seen this save lives. So, but we're not going to do a traditional gratitude list, okay? Anybody can do that. We're going to do something I call 25-5, and we're going to power it up. Now, the 25-5, 5 stands for five days. Starting today, you make a list of 25 things that you're sincerely grateful for. Now, here's the power up part. Oh, and don't repeat anything on tomorrow's list that's on today's list. Come on, stretch a little. New list tomorrow. Oh, does that seem like a lot? Because I used to assign 100 a day. See how your brain's already doing this? Oh, 25 doesn't seem that bad. Yeah. Okay. So notice your brain can't turn this off. You're going to be doing. So 25 items every day, at least half of your list. That's 13 if you're doing the math. At least half of your list every day is about the hard stuff. Okay. Whatever is challenging, difficult, painful, frustrating, kicking your trash right now. You take that the way it is right now without changing it and see what you're grateful for in that, from that, because of that. Now, I'm not saying you have to be grateful for the hard thing. Um, sometimes that's asking a little too much. Okay, I think you can practice and get to that point. But what I want you to notice is that if you open it up, okay, whatever your hard thing is, and if you don't have one, we can get you one. Anybody need one? Nobody's signing up for that. Okay. You've already got the hard stuff, right? So take your hard thing, whatever's challenging you right now, and open it up. Look inside of it. See what's there that you truly are grateful for. Put that on your list, okay? 
And it's not that you have to be grateful for the hard thing. It's just that's where you found it. You're here on this webinar today. Are you grateful for that? Yeah. Well, hopefully. I mean, if you're not grateful for it, why are you still here? Go away. <laughs> Sorry. I love having you here. But why would you be here if you weren't grateful for this? Okay. So I'm, I'm even seeing in the chat. Yes. Yes. Great webinar. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Why are you here? Because you've got stuff. you got stuff in your life that's kicking your trash a little. Welcome to the planet. That's how we that's how we roll here. Okay? So notice that. Now that difficult thing created whatever motivations for you to be here. And if you're grateful for this webinar, put it on your list today. 25 items, five days in a row. You in? Let's see it. If go to the chat, you guys. Just say I'm in. I'm doing it. The the gratitude power up. Awesome. Yes, Charlene, Jonathan, Melissa, Bab, Rommel, you're in. Okay, awesome. Whoever's not in, you can keep having whatever kind of life you're having. That's totally up to you. And those of you who are still watching on YouTube, go to the comments. Say, I'm in with the gratitude power up. Okay, right there on YouTube. Let's share it publicly. Declare it. <sighs> I get excited about this. Now, I've got more to share with you, and I want to make sure we still have time for some coaching. So let's go back to our model because we're not done yet. You know, the gratitude power up is going to change some things. I'll give you another brain hack in just a moment. We have to talk about one more process. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on this, but this is where hope lives. Let me tell you what I mean. Do you remember the word on the bottom was creation, excuse me, evaluation, right? Now we're going to the top of the model, creation. You can't turn this off either. Any more than you can turn off evaluation, which we already talked about, or gravity. You, it's always on you have to create. I believe this from a spiritual standpoint, too, that we are creators. It's in our divine nature. It's who we are. It's what we do. We have to create. Now, whatever your beliefs are about that, just check this out. You can't turn it off. Meaning you have to create something. What if I gave us a little challenge? What if I were to just ask you, hey, you guys, let's take a half hour. You know, we'll time you. Ready? We'll go out there. Use your creative power to somehow make your life worse. Are you ready? No, don't go. <laughs> but notice how quickly your brain came up with half a dozen ways you could pull that off. And it's not because you're supposed to go out and do that. I just want you to see that you could. You've got creative power in your head. And this is, would you ever do that on purpose? I mean, <laughs> I mean, we do it accidentally all the time. But you'd never do it on purpose, right? I hope. You watch the news, like that story I shared with you earlier. Somebody thought that up and, and essentially made their life and a whole lot of other lives worse through their creative efforts. Now, this is good news because you can make a mess. And some people are like, Dr. Paul, how the heck is that good news? Because I've got messes all over my life. I know. Notice that. This is good news because if you can make a mess, you can make, you can make. That is really good news. Now, I want you to notice something. What it is is all you got. Remember, we already talked about that. What is to be doesn't exist yet. We haven't created it yet. And you don't know. How are you doing next week? You don't know. Notice that. Notice that. You don't know. But you've got some predictions, don't you? Yes, because that amazing imagination of yours that we're using to evaluate things against, when we go to creation mode, your brain can come up with all kinds of possibilities. 
And apparently you can imagine ways to make your life a mess. You can also imagine ways to make it a masterpiece. Now there's a little catch. I'll come right back to it here in just a second. But notice that you don't know what's going to happen. How are you doing next week? You don't know. You've got something to do with it. Please don't forget that part. Now, I want to share with you the, the emotional impact of this because this is huge. Let's go back to the model. Take a look at this. Focus on the feelings now, okay? Since you don't know what's coming, all you can do right now is imagine it. And when you imagine or predict or expect that what's coming is even, whoops, let me get to the right page. Here we go. Even worse than what you've already got. How do you feel? Bad. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice short word. This, my friends, is anxiety. That is 30 years of clinical experience in a nutshell. It's how it's created, okay? Because anxiety is when we imagine that there's worse things coming. And then we feel that fear, apprehension, anxiety. Notice it. You're always right about how you feel. How you feel is consistent with how your mind is handling this and the other process that I already shared with you. Let's flip it over, okay? How do you feel, focus on the feelings, when you imagine or predict or expect, because you don't know, but when you imagine or predict or expect or project that what's coming is even better than what you've already got, how do you feel? Can I get a woohoo here? Yes, say it audibly. Put it in the chat. Ha excited. Anticipation. Hope. Hope. You guys, this is hope. And you can create it on demand. We don't have to wait for hope to show up. Because we can create it right now by steering our mind to focus on, anticipate, and expect better things to come, and we get busy building it. Just a little note here about creation. Um, everything, you look around yourself, okay? Everything in your environment. You look at my couch over there. Yes, a shrink has a couch. Isn't that appropriate? Um, I've got a little statue on my desk over there. I've got some cards here that I printed up with this positivity model on them. Um, none of these things in your environment existed until someone, somewhere, the creator actually thought about them first. Do you see that? Notice it. Okay. It has to be imagined first. That's how we're going to go create it. And what is to be is unknown. So you get to decide what position you're going to take. Let's finish the model out, and then I've, I, I got to get to your questions because I'm having fun sharing this, but I really want to talk to you. It could go either way, right? We can always imagine something worse. We can always imagine something better. Since we don't know, choose a position and pick one that serves you well or not. It's up to you. But notice that it's happening. Remember, I'm not here to tell you how to think. You want a brain hack? Here we go. BB-8. This is a little droid from Star Wars, right? We're not talking about the droid. I want to talk about the time. Okay, how sure are you that 8 o'clock is coming? Pretty darn. How sure are you that you will be around for 8 o'clock? Almost as. Sweet. Okay, there's only two options. Things cannot be exactly the same. I've already ruled that possibility out because at the very least, you're going to be a little older, aren't you? Yeah, notice that. So things have to be different. And by your own evaluation, which you can't turn off, things have to be either better or worse. 
at eight o'clock. I'm not even talking next week, next month, next year. I'm talking at eight o'clock. BB-8 stands for better by eight. Ask your mind right now. In fact, those of you who are here live or on YouTube, go to the, the comments or the chat here on Zoom. Think of some things that you could do before eight o'clock to make your life better by eight. Throw out some ideas. Let's go through a few here. What could you do to make things better by eight? Now, it can be a big thing. It can be a little thing. It doesn't matter. You're the creator. This is your project. You choose. What about your health? Uh, Tracy says, take a walk outside. Charlene says, well, I'm hungry, so I'll eat. Ah, brilliant. Phone a friend. Thank you, Ann. Yes. Um, Mary, get off work today. Yeah, right? I'm, look what's happening. Look what's happening. You've invited your brain to focus on what would be better by eight. And you have some creative power to actually go make that happen. How does that feel? Isn't that awesome? We have just talked about how you can create hope on purpose simply by choosing a position. And thank you for sharing all of your ideas. I won't get to all of them, but we're inviting your brain to go a different direction. And you just created hope on demand, on purpose, here while we're talking. What if, what if we got really good at doing that? Okay. Oh, I get excited about this. Okay. Let's go wrap this up. Here's the whole model. Okay. It could always be better. It could always be worse. When we get into evaluation mode, when we get into creation mode, knowing how to steer your brain makes all of the difference and it will create some amazing outcomes for you. Is that helpful? Do you guys love learning about positive psychology? I, you know, some people are out there saying, just think positive. You know, you hear that from motivational speakers, gurus on the stage, podcasters, YouTubers, or whatever, right? And they don't even know what it means. I'm a professional psychologist. I want you to know that your brain is doing those two things all the time. You can't turn it off. Now, I get this question all the time. Dr. Paul, why is it so hard? Why is it so hard to stay positive? <sighs> because default is down. What happens if you park your car on a hill and leave the brake off? Which way does it roll? And you never hear someone falling up, do you? Is this true? Not only if you park your car on a hill, but what, what about your exercise, your diet, your relationships? What happens when you let those go? Which direction do they go? Okay. Elevation requires effort, power, force. Gravity is always on. And this is true in psychology too. So no surprise that it's hard to stay positive. It's easy to think of all of the negative stuff. So quit beating yourself up for that. That's, that's gravity happening, but notice that it's happening and you can intentionally put yourself in a position to practice positivity. What have we accomplished so far? Um, I've shown you how you can assume a positive attitude or position, no matter what your what it is, is. I want you to see that. I want you to remember it and think about the notes that you've taken about what your own brain has told you about that. I've given you two specific hacks, one for evaluation, one for creation. So we're doing the gratitude power up 25.5 and we're doing better by eight, BB-8. In fact, if you do the BB-8 for the same five days, you get to have 10 upgrades to your life. How awesome is that? Do you see how that creates a feeling of hope inside of your heart and mind? Notice that. Can you see the need for consistent practice? <laughs> I practice this every day. I'm a black belt at positivity, okay? I, all day, every day. It's all I do. Um, teaching, training these models. In fact, I'm certifying. We just sold out our certification course. Yeah, certifying positivity practitioners. It's the best way to empower your own positivity. Get it 
to a place where you can actually teach it. But the constant practice is necessary. Now, what about that commitment? Okay, I asked you to commit to take your next step, whatever your next step is. And some of you may not know what that is. I want you to imagine for just a minute if you had a network of people around you that could support you in doing this. The knowledge that you need of timeless principles like the one that I shared with you today. That's powerful, you guys. That's my life's work in a model. All right? Powerful. Uh, what would happen if you had immediate access to resources and to coaching and assistance to get there? Um, I want to share with you really quickly before I get to some of your questions what we put together for you. Is that okay? If I share that with you for just a minute, um, here's, here's the visual. Okay. Um, it's called Live on Purpose Central. This is where I have put my entire life's work. All the courses, the books, the models, the, the coaching, everything that I've created, I have dumped here in one place on a membership site. Here's what you get at Live on Purpose Central if you choose to join us. You get freedom. Now, can I promise you freedom? Yes, if you will follow the principles that create that freedom and you get to be free from your head trash and free to move forward with whatever it is you've been promising yourself you'd do. I can show you how to get out of your own way and get there. I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm talking about on this. And I'm not saying that to brag. I want you to know that we figured some things out. And it's not magic. It's not luck. You can claim that freedom. You get to have confidence. You've got this. What would change for you if you had more confidence in your life? Hope. And you get to have it before Halloween. Because some of you are feeling it today. I'm so glad. Everything that you need to live on purpose. That's what's happening at Live on Purpose Central. You see a, a URL there, thehopeclass.com slash order. I'm going to have Lindy on my team just pop that into the chat for everybody so that you can see it. Um, thehopeclass.com slash order will take you right to an order page. Um, Look, you've got this, okay? And we've got you. One of the features that Live on Purpose Central is that I am there every week doing live personal coaching for you. I am working for you. Put me to work, okay? It's what I do. Who am I going to do it for? I want to do this for you, okay? I am working for you. You'll get group coaching and discussions. You're surrounded in support and all the programs and principles that you need. Therefore, what? So as you're sitting here on this webinar, and thank you, Anne, for your kind words. I've known Dr. Paul for over 33 years. Has it been that long? And man, that's amazing. Um, this is my life's work. Um, so as you ask yourself sitting here on the webinar, what is that commitment that I'm making to myself? What is next for me? Look, you don't have to stay stuck. You don't have to be in that place that you didn't think was, hopefully you see it as not a too bad of a place. It could always be worse, <laughs> but you don't have to be stuck anywhere. We get to create and move forward and do that together with the support that we need. Now, sometimes just before people say yes and jump into the room with us, they think that it costs too much. I'm going to blow that out of the water for you in just a minute. Okay. In fact, I'll just do it right now. You know what? I was inspired by an airplane. I told you I just got off of an airplane yesterday after we were out seeing our grandkids. And I'm so amazed by aviation. My son is a pilot and has taken me up in a small plane. And then there's big planes. The one that impresses me the most is the Boeing 747. And uh, as you see what it does, I mean, this is the shuttle transport. This is Air Force One. It's all the same plane, okay? Uh, the 747. And I thought, you know, that's what I've created at Live on Purpose Central. It's a vehicle, a powerful vehicle that can take you where you need to go. And so I decided I'm going to offer this for 747. 
I don't mean $747, I mean $7.47. I'll come back to that in just a minute so that you can see what that special deal is all about. Some think that they don't have the time to do this. That's always a lie, by the way. You've got just as much time as everybody else, 24 hours, seven days a week. The only question is, how are you going to use it? Part of my challenge to you would be, hey, spend some of your time on your mental hygiene. Mental hygiene. You've heard of dental hygiene, right? Do you know how much more important your mind is over your teeth? And your teeth are pretty important. How much time do you spend on your dental hygiene every day? Would you at least spend that much time on your mental hygiene? And you can do that at Live On Purpose Central. We have all the resources there for you to do that. It's kind of like a gym membership, by the way. I don't want you to go in and think, oh, I, there's no way I can do all these machines today. No. Or your Netflix. Oh, there's no way I can see all of these movies. You're not supposed to. Okay, the resources are there. You can pick what you need or what you want. Go in, work out, come back. That's why we've set it up as a membership. Some people think that they've tried everything already and it hasn't worked. Let's just debunk that puppy right now, shall we? You haven't tried everything. You've tried what you've tried. Okay, have you tried this? Could you try something differently? Even if you're a member of Live on Purpose Central already, and I know some of you are because I've seen some of the names on the list. Uh, could you do this differently? Okay. You haven't tried everything yet. And I know that there are some things that'll work. You felt some hope today. What would it be like to get a little bit more of that? Okay. When you go to that website, let me just walk you through this a little bit so that you don't get lost. Where's my visual? Here we go. And then I'm going to wrap up and take your questions. So be ready. When you go to uh, the hopeclass.com slash order, you're going to see an order form. Pretty simple. Give me your identifying information there. And then you want to make sure you hit that red button at the bottom. Go to step two. That takes you to the next page where you have your pricing options. You're going to see it's $7.47 today. That gets your whole first month for what you would probably spend on beverages this week. All right? You have full access. I'm not holding anything back from you. Go in. Use whatever machines in the gym apply to you right now. Don't feel like you have to do everything. I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I want you to show up and to do that consistently over a period of time. Now, at the end of your first month, you'll be billed $67 a month for as long as you want to continue. You can stop before that if you want to. Come try it out for $7.47. Put me to work for you. Now, why 67 I get that question sometimes. Well, because I picked 67. But here's why. $67 is roughly half of what the average cost of one session of mediocre therapy is in the market that I live in, in the United States. Half of what it would cost for one session of mediocre therapy. And you get a full month for that. And this is so much better. Believe me, I have done both. I know. That's why I have built it this way. Okay. I want this to be affordable to anyone so that you can maintain your mental health. And then finally hit that last button. That'll complete your order. Okay. When you're in, you'll get an email from me. Watch your inbox. You'll get an email from me giving you a link where you can finish setting up your account. Now, this isn't for everybody, but if it's for you, would you please just come and try it? Get in the room with us. I'm there every week at Live On Purpose Central coaching you. And that's what I want to do next. Oh, we have a little special bonus, too, for anybody who signs up before we sign off here today. You get to have my five videos that I would recommend you share with your kids. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a little PDF. It describes the video. You get all five of them with a little link where you can pull up videos that I have designed to help you teach your kids some of the principles that will allow them to create hope in their life. So as, I don't know if you needed that incentive or not, but I just like action takers. I love that you step up and do what you commit to do. So I'm going to reward those of you who will do that before we finish off today. Let's um let's see what's going on for you guys. Okay. Um I've got Lindy here. 
who can answer some questions. Let's go to the Q&A. Got several. Could things still remain the same other than the time later at eight o'clock? Oh, I think I know what you're asking. Can, could, could things remain the same? There are certain conditions that might remain the same, but my feeling is that at least in a very subtle way, sometimes a very drastic way, things are not the same later. That things will not be the same. Even at eight o'clock, you pick any time later on, it's going to be different in some way. And you will judge whether it's better or whether it's worse. You can't turn that off. So that would be my answer to that. Let's go to, here's another anonymous question. I have a daughter that struggles with positivity. Oh, and by the way, you guys, this is the time if anyone wants to ask a question live, hit the raise hand here if you're live here on Zoom. Now, if you're on YouTube just watching the stream, uh, you're welcome to watch, uh, watch in. But if you're not registered, you don't have that option. Um, Raise your hand if you want to come on and ask me something live. Otherwise, I'll handle the questions that are here in the Q&A, and we'll see how far we can go. Um, one of you asked, I have a daughter that struggles with positivity. I believe she might be unrealistic in her better than feels disappointed, negativity, depression, when it doesn't happen. Any ideas? Yes. Thank you for asking that. Now, when you get into Live on Purpose Central, in fact, you know what? I can show you this. Can I give you a little tour? Because I think this will help to answer your question. All right. I've got to share a different screen this time. Okay, here we go. All right. I think you guys can see my, my screen here. This is Live on Purpose Central. This is what you see when you go in. You'll notice here we have the positivity power up, which is about personal development, positivity. I get into a full-on training on the model that I shared with you today. I used to sell that, by the way, for 400 bucks. I still do. You can still buy it for 400 bucks. It's part of the membership. It's there. Go use it. The parenting power-up. We originally sold this for $150, and we put it on sale for $47 at different types. It's part of the, part of the package. Get into the parenting power-up. Um, your daughter who's struggling with positivity will benefit greatly from the principles that are here, uh, whether she engages in it or not. Because as you do your own personal development, and as you access the tools over in the Parenting Power Up, you're gonna find all kinds of tools. Um, let me acknowledge also in your question, um, she might be unrealistic in her better and then feels disappointed. When we get into creation mode, we go out there and we imagine something better that we're going to go create, right? And then what inevitably happens? We fall short of whatever our imagination was, whatever standard we set for ourselves. Yeah, this is how it works. You're not doing anything wrong. Welcome to earth. Okay. And then we judge that. Now, what if I set a goal to make a thousand dollars doing whatever my little project is? Okay. And I only make 850. I failed, right? <coughs> Excuse me. No, I made 850 bucks. I'm just pulling those numbers out of the air, but do you see what I'm talking about? It, I, one of my friends is from the South and she said, it's better to shoot for the moon and hit the fence than it is to shoot for the fence and hit a cow pie. <laughs> So go ahead and aim high. Are you going to fall short? Yes, probably so, because you can always imagine something better. Um, I would love to get into that conversation more. Thank you for that question. Let's go to uh, Gregory. Do you want to come talk to me? I'm going to send you an invitation to turn on uh, your camera and your mic and rejoin me here as a panelist. Let's see if that goes through. And if you accept that invitation, we'll get to talk right here. Did it come through, Gregory? Yeah, I think you have to accept the invitation too. Let's see if it works. And Gregory declined, but I've got a question. This might be the same Gregory. I think it is. 
How do I find supportive people to help out being positive and stay on track? Ah, uh, I have no idea. I'm kidding you. Come in to live on Purpose Central. That's what we built this for. Gregory, I hope that helps. Um, come try it out, okay? I'm giving you that, that first month for $7.47. Um, once again, Lindy, can you put that in the chat again? Um, thehopeclass.com slash order. We'll take you right to that page. And notice it expires at midnight on Halloween. This is hope before Halloween. So by the time Halloween ends, the special price is going away. So come get it, right? To sign up right now, okay? You can jump in and see the archives from my uh, Ask Dr. Paul sessions over the last several weeks. You don't even have to wait for the next live one to come up. Oh, and by the way, uh, let me show you this too, because this will answer a couple of the questions that I'm seeing here. Um, here we are. I think you can see my screen again. Um, when you're here at Live On Purpose Central, you'll notice there's an events tab. Do you see that? Right here under the word central. You click on that, it will open up a calendar. The calendar will show you everything that's happening live. Now, it doesn't show past events, so you're going to see most of October is clear. But uh, Hope Before Halloween, that's happening today. Next Wednesday at 4 o'clock p.m. Mountain. It will show you in your own time zone, by the way, is my next Ask Dr. Paul session. So you'll always see when those live ones are coming up and you can jump in, okay? That's what I would say, Gregory. Come on in, join us, get in the room. Um, anonymous, what types of topics are good for the gratitude journal in the webinar? Is being thankful for a job, family, shelter, et cetera, too basic for the gratitude journal? I started a gratitude journal before, but struggled with it. Thank you for this question. Let me just address this in a general way, but then you can get as specific as you want to, okay? Any category of your life counts. The thing that's most important, this is what makes it a power-up instead of just a gratitude journal or a gratitude list. You know, traditionally, you just list things that are pleasant and nice and health and family and puppies and rainbows and indoor plumbing. Okay, anybody can be grateful for that stuff. This is light lifting. I want you to power it up by finding something that is hard, difficult, painful, frustrating, kicking your butt. All right. So if it's your job, what about your job is frustrating? If it's your family, who in your family are you having some conflict with? If it's your shelter, what's leaking or whatever? OK, find the hard thing and, and discover. Ask your brain to do this. Okay, I want you to run your thoughts. Either you run your thoughts or your thoughts run you. So um, ask your brain to tell you what you're grateful for in that, from that, because of that hard thing. All right, you see how that works? Um, so the category doesn't matter, but the important part is go for the hard stuff. You know, one of my colleagues, Kevin Clayson, love that man. He's the author of, um, flip the gratitude switch, which is one of the assignments you'll get in the positivity power up. If you jump into that course, that's part of the reading. Okay. Flip the gratitude switch by Kevin Clayson. And he explained to me that sometimes we do the light lifting. You know, if you were to go to the gym, for example, and I've compared this to a mental gym. All right. But if you were to go to the gym and you went every day, would your strength increase? Would your health increase? Yeah, probably. But what if you're going to the gym every day and you reach over there on the desk and you pick up a, a pen and, and you do five reps with your right arm and you do five reps with your left arm with the pen and you set it back down and then you come back tomorrow. Put on some weight on the dumbbells, I mean, right? Create some resistance there. Do the hard things. That's what gets you the most uh, forward motion. So you can go do your gratitude list without any particular uh, hard stuff in there, and it's not going to help much, I promise. In fact, that gets boring really fast. But if you'll ask your brain to do this, I promise you're going to see some powerful things. Another anonymous one here. You guys are, are being very anonymous today, which is fine. Um, 
I've got a few minutes left. I'm going to spend about another five minutes or so. So if you want to raise your hand and come on in, um, please do. Would love to talk to you. Okay, let's take a look at this one. I, if I cannot find something important that could be a problem, if not found, how do I stay positive with the better or worse until I find it? How do I apply this if I cannot find the important item? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by important item, it, it, unless you mean, you know, that thing that's difficult, painful, hard, frustrating. Really? You can't find anything difficult, painful, or frustrating in your life? Find something. Do you have any pain anywhere? And if not, wow. And buckle up <laughs> because stuff happens, right? So, and you can you can even think back on, okay, what in the past 24 hours or in the past week or in the past month has been a challenge for me? And we want to find the hard stuff to ask our brain to go there. Remember, elevation requires effort. Okay, default is down. So it's going to take a little bit of effort to get there. What is it that's difficult, painful, hard, frustrating? That's how we, I think I, think I understood what you're asking on that question. I may have missed it. Um, put in another question if you need to. Okay, uh, another attendee. I feel things are the same and I have the same results each time, even when making changes. Well, that's interesting. Um, that's a thought, by the way. When we get into the coaching, you're going to see that the model is the foundation, okay? But the coaching has to do with identifying your own thoughts about something that are creating your feelings. And a lot of people, when they describe their situation, they think they're just telling me how it is, when really they're telling me more about their thoughts than they are about their circumstances, okay? They'll say, oh, this really hard thing happened. And I already know this is not about what happened. This is about what they're thinking about it. How do I know that? Because they said this really hard thing happened. Look, it's only hard compared to something easier. Right? Is that weird? But our brain will attach that meaning to it. You know, this is bad. Really? How do you know it's bad? Well, compared to something better, it is. Again, I'm not here to tell you how to think. I just want you to see that you are. Um, let's look at this next one. If rejected by another person in a work or friend relationship, it seems not much could be worse at the moment. What can I do to change my thoughts in the moment? Oh, thank you for this question. Um, because I want to just add another dimension here. Okay, this is something I got from one of my coaches and, and now a colleague and friend, Jody Moore. Some of you may be familiar with her. I've, I've mentioned her. I've featured her in a few videos and on a podcast. And she helped me to make a distinction between clean pain and dirty pain. Okay, so going to your question, uh, when when a relationship breaks up or when you have a betrayal of some kind, or you receive an injury, whether it's emotional or physical, what are you supposed to feel? Pain. I talk about this in my book, Pathological Positivity. The pain, thinking that pain is a problem, is a problem. Pain is necessary. In fact, there have been some studies done of children who have a condition called congenital analgesia, meaning that they don't feel any pain. And they are at a high risk, high risk for injury and other difficulties because pain is part of who you are. It's built in. So how should you feel? Look, feeling pain doesn't mean you're not being positive. Feeling pain means that your neurons are still firing. All right, and that's good news. You remember at the end of Pirates of the Caribbean, the first one, the good one, where the, the pirate became mortal for a moment and he said, I feel, just before he died or whatever, I can't remember all the details, but that stuck in my mind because the big deal was that he could feel and you have to be able to feel pain in order to feel anything. Clean pain is the pain that you feel 
when you experience a loss, when you have an injury, when something happens, when someone leaves, when stuff happens, okay? Clean pain, that's how you're supposed to feel. Dirty pain is when your brain, through either evaluation or creation, makes more pain for you that is unnecessary. That's dirty pain, okay? So someone dies, you're gonna feel some clean pain if you chose to love them. If you don't love people, you're not gonna feel any pain. There's other negative side effects to that. So um, you're gonna feel the pain, right? But then having the thought that this shouldn't have happened, which isn't true, by the way, spoiler alert, nobody gets out of this alive. I know, right? Everybody dies. So should this have happened? Well, yeah, because it happens to humans, to mortal human beings on planet Earth. Everyone dies. So it's stinking thinking when your brain goes through this shouldn't have happened, and that's going to cause you some dirty pain. I'm not saying it's wrong to think that. I want you to just notice. In fact, one of my clients said, I guess I just really need to change how I think. And I'm like, or not. It's totally up to you, okay? You don't have to change a thing. You may want to change a thing. That same client, he's like, but I want to change how I think. Okay, I can get behind that all day long. And that's what we're doing at Live On Purpose Central. Would you like to join us there? Some of you are already there. Thank you to those of you who are there. I am so honored to be on your team. I am honored to be on all y'all's team. Uh, the time I've spent in South, I, I realize all y'all is plural, where y'all is singular. Anyway, that, that's for your gee whiz collection. I say stuff all the time that doesn't even matter. Thank you for being here. I am honored to be on your team. I hope you got something that's going to create some hope. Once again, thehopeclass.com slash order. If you haven't jumped in yet, come jump in, okay? Give it a whirl. Put me to work for you. Let's see if we can create some more hope on a consistent basis. Thank you for your questions. I'm going to be taking those on uh, personally and in depth every week at Live On Purpose Central. You can come and ask me anything. It can be about this. It can be about your kids. It can be about your business. It can be about why do you wear what you wear, Dr. Paul? You can ask me anything, okay? And I reserve the right to answer or not, but I usually do. Love you guys. Thank you for being here. I will catch you next.